Hi, we're standing in my workroom in Second Life looking at an arts and crafts plant stand that I made out of mesh. I'm filming this in August 2011 and mesh is brand new. It just came out earlier this week. There's been a lot of talk about mesh, so I made this object so people can explore it, and I'm releasing it as a dollar bee so that everybody can have a lot of fun playing with it. Mesh is just a model. It's made in a 3D modeling program of some kind and imported directly into Second Life. This is the first time that we can do this, and there are some real advantages to it. First, in order to see a mesh as a real thing and not as a torus or other geometric shape, you need to have one of the new mesh-enabled viewers. I'm using the newest Linden viewer, which is viewer 3.0. So this is a mesh. Notice all of the really nice detail. It has these little pieces here underneath, the little brackets, and it's got cutouts, um, nice smooth ones. And if I open this, edit it, and go to texture and turn shininess on to high, you can see that it's perfectly mirror smooth. There are no bumps, there's no distortion, there's no um, wrinkling or anything like that. It's all just as pretty and smooth as it can possibly be. I'm going to turn that back off so that we can see the texture. Now while we have this open, notice that I have one object selected which says two prims and four prim equivalents. The one object is the plant stand and its shadow. Two prims means that there's one thing that is the plant stand and one thing that is the shadow, but four prim equivalents means that this mesh costs more than a single prim. One mesh can be worth any number of prims for accounting purposes. This one is a linked object and it has the two prims. If I were to unlink it by holding down the shift key and the control key and clicking L, notice that the mesh object by itself also says four prim equivalents and the shadow prim by itself says it's one prim equivalent. And when I link them back up, it's still four prims. This is because the mesh itself is actually something like 3.48 prims, something like that, I don't really remember exactly. But it's less than four full prims, so things change when you link it. Now, one of the disadvantages of mesh is that the prim equivalent is not static. It changes when the model is linked or unlinked, as we've seen, and it can also change when it's resized. But in order to understand that, we have to understand LOD, or levels of detail. So let's take a look at that. As you move away from things in Second Life, they got smaller on the screen, and they drop down to other levels of detail. And let's go up here to the Advanced menu to Show Debug Settings, Render, Volume, LOD Factor, and I'm going to set the factor back down to the default by hitting the Reset to Default button. Ordinarily, I run with it at 8. I suggest that you put it at 4 or something higher, because the higher it is, the more things will hold their shape even as you're backing away. Um, so the world will look a whole lot better and it really doesn't slow you down at all. I don't know why they have it set where they do, but... Now, watch as I back away. Did you see it just drop to a lower LOD? And notice that I can get quite far away. And by now, the sculpts are losing a lot of detail. And the um, plant stand there still pretty much holds its shape the way that it was. And that's because when you're uploading a mesh, you can upload different models for the different LODs. This actually would have been one prim equivalent less, except I decided that I needed to have a better model for the medium LOD, which you get to um, right there. Did you see the top change? That's dropping to the next lowest LOD. So that's how that works. Now, one of the things that they use to determine prim equivalency is how often the lower LODs are going to be used. The larger a model is, the more screen real estate it's going to take, and so the less likely you are to drop to the lower LODs. So um, if you have something that's really big, your prim equivalency will go up. Let's take a look at that. See, my prim equivalency is still four at that stage. And um, now it's up to six. And 
now it's up to 38. That's as big as it'll go. And that is one huge plant stand. Notice that it's larger than a tree. But the prim equivalency can get fairly high, so let's undo all of that. That's the disadvantage of mesh, but the advantages are, of course, the beautiful size. And this is only four prims, so that's pretty low prim for this amount of detail. And notice how nice the texture is. Now, the reason that we can get such beautiful textures with all of this shading and everything else on a model that's only four prims is because, for the first time, we can make our own UV maps. Let's uh, edit this again. Everything in Second Life is made of a bunch of points or vertices, and those vertices have coordinates on the X, Y, Z axes. That's the very same X, Y, Z axes that you're using here in the build dialog all of the time. They can also have coordinates on the U and V, that is the horizontal and vertical axes, on a flat picture that's used to determine where the texture goes. SL looks at those coordinates to decide where to put a particular color from the texture you've applied. The bits between the vertices, which we call edges and polygons, are extrapolated from the positions of the vertices. It's as if the textures were all on super stretchy pieces of rubber or spandex, and the vertices were push pins that were used to attach them to the model. With mesh, we can make our own UV maps, and that means that we can make a model that is beautifully easy to texture. And um, I made this one so that you can retexture it so that you can play with that yourself. If you open it up, you will see that inside there is this um, box of full perm textures. And if you just drag that out onto the world, you can open that and copy them to your inventory. And um, let's go to recent here. And you can see all of the textures right here. And one of the things that you have in here are your UVs. So this is the UV map that is used for the plant stand shelves, and that's um, 1024 by 1024 pixels, really. Um, I have it pulled out because that's the shape frame that I mean it to be, but we're going to upload it and work on it, and you'll see that you have to resize it in your graphics program. So to get it where you can work on it, you just open it like that, and then you click the Save As button, and um, I've already done this once, but I'm going to do it again, <laughs> and I'm just going to save it as plant stand shelves. Yes, I was practicing. And um, you might see a green progress bar depending on how fast your computer is. When it's done, it will say file saved like it did right there. And then that will go away. So click OK. And now we're going to move into Photoshop and um, another movie and see how simple it is to texture the shelf.